Hey there, guys. All right, today we are back with some more History Matters, and this time we're asking the question, why are so many countries called Guinea? A short animated documentary. It's, a, it's, genuinely, it's actually a question I really do have. We have Guinea-Bissau, New Guinea, Papua New Guinea. Is there one just called Guinea? I don't remember. Um, but before we dive in and get to the bottom of this question, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I would love it if you joined the Discord and followed me over at Twitch. And please do go check out the gaming channel here on YouTube, where I upload old streams and dumb clips. Embarrass myself on the internet more so than this channel. Uh, um, with that out of the way, don't really have anything else to add here at the beginning of this video because I don't really have a guess. Um, were all were all countries that are called Guinea were they all uh, colonized by the Portuguese? I can't remember. I'm trying to picture where they all are on in, in my head. I can't remember. So, aside from perhaps a potential common colonizer, I don't really know why else, what else the answer could be. Let's dive in. Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Papua New Guinea, and of course, Equatorial Guinea. It's Equatorial Guinea, so there is no Guinea-Guinea. Guinea, Guinea-Bissau. Guinea oh wait, no, there is a Guinea. Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Papua New Guinea, and of course, Equatorial Guinea. Ah. Uh. Since you have ears, you'll notice that they all share a common name, something which few other countries do since even states with similar names get mixed up. But why mm -hmm. is this the case? Why are there so many countries with Guinea in their name? So before we answer that, there's something that needs to be cleared up. The Guineas and the Guianas are not related. Two different words with two different histories. The one we're focusing on most likely comes from an old Berber word which means dark skin. And it was used to describe the collective lands along the coast of their south and the people who lived there. Ah. Europeans only had a few names for parts of Africa, like Barbary for the north, Ethiopia for most of the continent, another term for this area, and Guinea was adopted for these lands. Another term for this area. I have a feeling I know what... Okay. You see, Europeans made use of North African navigators to help them sail down the coast of Africa, and so it wasn't long until the name for the region stuck with all of them. And when Europeans later colonised the area, the different European powers used Guinea to refer to their separate parts of it. The first was Portugal who claimed this area, calling it Portuguese Guinea. There was also Swedish Guinea, which would later become Danish Guinea, and soon after that Dutch Guinea, before the British took it for themselves and called it the Gold Coast. Jesus Christ. Sweden, what the fuck were you doing in Africa? What? <laughs> In the late 19th century, France had its turn to colonise parts of the area and in a shocking display of originality, called it French Guinea. Oh Later, God. when decolonisation saw Africa freed, French Guinea was the first to win its independence and so it got dibs on plain old Guinea. About 20 years later, Portuguese Guinea followed and it soon took the name Guinea-Bissau. To the south, mostly outside of the region, is Equatorial Guinea. This was first colonised by Portugal who soon... You are found. <laughs> sold this island to the Spanish who soon took control of this region. In the late 19th century, the French... So they don't have a common ancestry. It is... A, it's a... The word itself, Guinea, common use. Um, but they weren't all colonized by the same country. Okay. Castled in on this region, wrong. they signed a deal with the Spanish, which settled on these borders. With Spain gaining the small colony of Rio Muni, which combined with the island of Bioko in 1929. And it called this combination Spanish Guinea, because the island of Bioko was a part of the region, despite the rest not being so. And when the nation gained its independence, it kept the name Guinea, but given that Guinea was already taken, it adopted the name Equatorial Guinea because of its location. So what about Makes Papua sense. New Guinea on the other side of the world, which is firmly and entirely not within the region of Guinea? Well, before Europeans arrived, the island was known as Papua, but cultural sensitivity is not the cornerstone of imperialism. Lama's listen to this line again. Cultural sensitivity. Europeans arrived, the island was known as Papua, but cultural sensitivity is not the cornerstone of imperialism. And I love that line so much. That is such. You knew as he was writing the script for this video, and the idea came for him for that sentence. He was like, "Damn, that's a banger." You just know. I got 100% confidence that as he wrote that line, whoever wrote the script for this episode was just like, yeah, that fucking slaps. No matter what, we're keeping that in. And so the Spanish explorers who first mapped the island's coastline picked a new name, New Guinea. So why Guinea and not something else like New Aragon? Well, they chose this name because as far as they were concerned, the natives who lived on Papua were indistinguishable from the Africans of Guinea, and so they were essentially the same. Good old European racism. Several centuries later, the island was divided between three powers, with the Netherlands, Germany, and Britain taking their own chunks. 
As you'll know, Germany's team came second in World War One, <laughs> so their part went to Britain. And in 1949, both parts were united under Australian leadership. In 1975, it gained its independence, and given that the name had been used for about four centuries at this point, it just sort of stuck. And that's why there are four countries called Guinea. I hope you enjoyed This was a fantastic episode. And this was why so many countries are called Guinea, a short animated documentary by History Matters. They really... It really felt like we got way more depth and context. In, like, this did not feel like a 2 minute and 40, 40 second long video. It felt like we got the context of like a 10 minute long video. Squeezed in really quickly. But like, it was still so well paced. Like, it wasn't, like, I wasn't, like, feeling like, uh, um, the information was too, coming too fast, you know? I don't, who the fuck writes these scripts for History Matters? I have said this time and time again, whoever does is a goddamn script writing genius. Because just the amount of information they managed to squeeze in here, and just how concise they make it, it's just fucking perfection. It really, like... I I don't know what else to say. Like I like now and again now and again they do have those videos that I feel are a little bit weaker in terms of the amount of context they squeeze in, but it's purely because on the average they they just fit so much in, it's just mind boggling. I don't understand how they do it. Um because right, we we watch, you know, other channels here uh on this channel um and really none of them seem to squeeze in the the amount of inf the amount of like it feels like the amount of context that history matters can squeeze in um but so so smoothly history matters just does it smoothly it doesn't feel like they're cramming it in it just feels natural anyways that was my tangential praising of history matters um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.